you got the resume done. You're excited. You're gonna, you know, you're ready to apply for that job. Oh wait, there's one more thing you gotta do, and that is create a cover letter. We're gonna talk about it next. Hello everybody, my name is John Dornoff. It is a dawn of a better life for you, your career, and your business. We want you to live a better life that you're capable of. This week we're talking about the cover letter. Last week we talked about the resume. Of course, well, anytime you send in a resume, you need to send in a cover letter. So what do you put on the cover letter? We'll talk about it. First thing you have to do is, well, you should have already done it because you did your resume, is do research on the company you're applying for. Now the question is, if you've, you know, who do you send it to? Who is it addressed to? If you're applying for a blind ad, which is probably the worst way to apply for a job these days, you know, you can't really tell who you applying for but if you've done some networking talk to friends if they referred you to the job or you know people you know contacts you know then you know the person that you're sending the, the cover letter to the fir biggest thing you need to know think about when you're creating a resume it, and a cover letter is that you are selling yourself you are a salesperson. Then most people go, oh, I'm not a salesperson. I got news for you. Everybody is a salesperson. In some way, shape, or form. No matter what you do in life, you're selling in some way, shape, or form. So it's best to know, you know, what's a good way to sell well to the people you're, you know, whatever you're doing. In this case, you're selling whoever's going to read that cover letter, that you are the best person for the job. So here's some tips. Number one, the resume should be about three paragraphs. You know, you should, you know, three strong paragraphs is what it should be. Number two, you got to have a strong opening. Track attention. Why? Should they look further? Three, you, what has to be in that cover letter is what you bring to the company. You know, you could say, well, I'll do this, I'll do that. How are your abilities specific to what you want to do in that job? Or you know, if you're applying for a specific job, how are your abilities going to work for that job? And why they should, why your abilities are better than somebody else's. Now you don't put down somebody, but what you do is build yourself up. Of course, next is of course you have to be honest on the res, on the cover letter, because guess what? Some people may be able to fool you, but once you get in there, they'll quickly realize that you could lie and you might be thrown out very quickly. As I mentioned before, it needs to be short. You don't want a cover letter that's more than one page long, or else it's not going to get read, and be you might be worry about it being thrown into file thirteen. Also, don't let it be generic. And you know, we talked about it in the resume. The resume has to be tailored to the job you're applying for. The cover letter, even more so. It needs to be tailored. Why your abilities match? Why they? Why do they need you? Why do they need to hire you? And here's a little bit of advice: be careful with names. Now, of course, if you were specifically referred to a person, you may know that who this person is, or you know a little bit about them. But if they just say apply to so and so. If the name could be somebody who could be of either sex, you know, be careful about that. Is that person you're applying for, is it Miss Noel or is it Mr. Noel? Perfect example because I've worked with somebody. In fact, I've worked with people, both male and female with that name. 
and you wouldn't believe how many times you would see correspondence, even from people you do business with, get that wrong. And that's pretty embarrassing. So remember, you know, just check the names. It's pretty easy. If I have questions, you know, if I'm sending a correspondence to somebody I don't know, and it's, imp you know, I will look up their LinkedIn profile, and that's easy, you know, as long as they have a picture, you can tell, you know, should it be. Now, most cover letters these days are sent electronically. You don't have to worry about this. But if you got one where you're actually mailing it in, make sure to use the good quality resume paper. Don't use cheap 20 pound copy paper. Good resume paper is usually around 32 pound paper and it's not white. It's usually like, you know, a tan color, you know, sand, they call it sand or there's other names they call for it. But don't go overboard with, get some fancy paper. I mean, I know the office supply stores and the um, paper companies, they sell this paper that is wavy and or, you know, there are other weird shapes and stuff. Just use standard paper. Keep it simple. So there are some great suggestions for a cover letter. And I'll link the, to back to the article on resumes so you can look back on that. Because there's, you know, they both go together. You deserve to have a good job. But you got to tell them why they should be hiring you and we'll see you next time